and welcome to our small little 3D modeling or sub D modeling exercise, uh, which actually is going to be a part of a much larger lecture series that going to rework our old custom marching cubes tutorial series that I've done before. And the plan is that we're going to make them make the whole script, the custom marching cubes algorithm, much faster and we will make it so that it can handle millions of elements um, really really fast so that's that's the plan if you have no idea what what the hell i'm talking about um, on this channel we do have lecture series which are called custom marching cubes uh, where i explain it uh, quite quite uh, quite a lot but here a quick Google search of marching cubes just will show us these images, right? And these images are basically different versions or different elements that can be used to describe any kind of shape, right? So these um, these forms or these these elements can be stacked and arranged into any kind of three-dimensional geometry, closed three-dimensional geometry. Right? So if I scroll down here, yeah, for instance, this Pac Man thing right here. All of these elements, like that, the whole surface is made out of some of these elements that are listed here, right? So what I have here in this 3D file is basically a, a modeled out guidelines for, for these. Um, elements that we can use, the, the, cust uh, the marching cubes elements, right? But what I'm going to be doing with them is I'm going to be remodeling them into a sub D geometry or something like that. And I have no idea if I'm recording this, so let me check. I am, that's perfect. <laughs> so we can start. Oh, and actually, I, you will notice that I don't have a webcam turned on. That is because this is a 3D modeling exercise and I don't want you to see pain in my eyes as I'm trying to do mesh modeling in Rhino. But it is what it is and we need to practice, right? We do need to practice. I'll start with element type 1 and I guess that's going to be the... Element type 1 is just going to be the, the, the extents of this video. Uh, we'll, we'll continue on with uh, other elements in other videos. So I'm just kind of describing where I will have my points. Um, the, 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 let's see the connection points. These three points are very important. And I'll kind of work around it, pl plan ahead, and I'll just give it a little bit of a, of a yoink here. A yoink here. And a yoink here. So now, if I were to describe a three-point surface, a triangle, you can see that I'm creating basically an offset from the initial triangle, right? That still follows the, the, the logic of being encapsulated in a voxel or in, in a box, right? So let's actually do the offset to both sides. So I'm just going to hold down the Alt key and minus one, something like that. And these kind of, um, uh, how do I call them, uh, 3D modeling exercises, I feel like these are great to, to do once in a while, just not to get too rusty and to get used to new tools that are coming out in Rhino. So I have my guide points right here, and I'm just going to, maybe I'll hide the guide in total, yeah, yeah, let, let, let's have it like that. So I have uh, six points in, in, in total. Here I'm just going to create um, a single sub D face. So uh, face right here, and one more right here. Oh, missed that one. What the hell? Oh, that's the smart track being obnoxious as per usual. There we go. We have our two sub D faces. If I hit tab, you can see I can switch between the uh, subdivided mode and unsubdivided mode or flat shading mode so these two guys huh 
Actually, I want to have more resolution than just a triangle and I want to work with quads as, as much as possible. So I'm going to select both of them and I'll type in uh, subdivide, hit enter. And as I'm doing that, I can see that it's actually rounding off the corners as it's subdividing my triangle. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to hold Ctrl Shift, select all of the edges. So Ctrl Shift and just drag around the whole damn thing and then type in crease. So I'm basically creasing the edges. Now as I hit tab, you can see that it's not um, not changing the, the, the preview of it. That's because the perimeters are creased. I'm going to select both of them and subdivide them again. Subdivide. There we go. And now you can see that it retains or it keeps its initial... Uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Perimeter. It keeps the perimeter, right? So that's good. I don't need the points anymore. I do have these two surfaces and I'm gonna continue using them. So now I actually want to bridge the gap between them and have have this as a brick almost. So I'm going to Control shift double click on one edge, Control shift double click on the other to get both perimeters in here and type in bridge to just bridge between them. With one segment, don't need more than one. I uh, don't need to crease it, just hit OK. This is how it looks like. Let's turn on the guide. You can see that it does follow the guide. This is flat preview, subdivided preview. OK, we have a blob, a, a pillow. Congratulations. Now we need to actually give it a little bit more of rigidity because you can see that it's kind of, it's not sharp enough, right? It, it's too blobby. So I'm going to probably control shift select the three front faces by the way when you subdivide a triangle you get three quads that's a very useful thing so i'm selecting the bottom and the top surface and i'm going to use inset mode group enter and i'm going to inset by 0.1 i guess yeah let's do 0.1 by the way, just if, you, if you're trying to follow along, um, the distance, uh, the, the, the size of the box in which I am uh, modeling this is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. It's a cube, right? Just so you know. So 0.1 is basically a one millimeter inset. Now I have this border protected here and here, right? So we call this uh, creating protection for the border. And this is only one side protected. If I want to protect the other side, I would need to inset um, these surfaces as well. Inset, group, like that, right? And now you can see like this side has um, only protection on only one border here, right? And uh, the left-hand side has protection on two borders, so you can see how much sharper it gets. But actually, I kind of like the, the one that's protected only on one border, so I'm not going to do, do the inset on the sides. I'm going to keep them as, as they are. And as you can see, now it's a little bit more um, defined, but there is still some ways to go. I'm going to select the edge here, the, the, the sharp edge there, the sharp edge there, the sharp edge there and I'm going to I could crease them right if I just crease those edges and hit tab this is what happens it, it does something like this it's not pretty not pretty at all but you know it does keep the triangular notion of it but I don't want to do that instead of creasing I'm going to select those three edges and I'm going to bevel create a bevel on them and just bevel by I guess same 0.1 right as it was before so as we're beveling we're creating a triangle here but eh, hey it is what it is right at least now it looks pretty damn good right at least I think so 
Okay, so we have a triangle uh, made out of sub D. Big whoop. <laughs> let's let's try and uh, do something a little bit nicer with it. I'm going to select the these three surfaces here and three faces in the bottom as well. Again, the inner ones, and I'm going to. How do we do this? Let's inset again. This is again me planning ahead a bit. Inset as a group 0.3, something like that. Enter, enter again. There we go. And then I'm going to inset as a group by 0.1 again. Enter, right? So we have like one inset a larger one, a smaller one, and then we have these three surfaces here. I'm gonna delete them. By the way, uh, for, for 3D modeling purposes, this actually really helps. If you go to the display, and here under shaded settings, if you find color back faces, this, this little thing right here, if you tick mark it, you can color your back faces in, in any color you want. Right, and then you will see, you know, if, if you're looking inside of an object or outside of an object, it just really helps. So, I'm gonna select these three faces, I'm gonna uh, delete them. Right, so now this looks weird, but what we can do is we can select the front face, oh, uh, sorry, the, 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 the back perimeter and the front perimeter, the inner perimeter, and we can bridge bridge between them with just one segment that's fine just create a bridge hit tap and we have ourselves i mean a, a pretty nice little design here if we do an e-map you can see with an e-map it's it's pretty pretty clean there are some probably some issues here no not really seems to be fine so this is our little form right here let's add some more let's let's do some more um for instance what if what if we sorry i'm just thinking out loud What if we just draw a, a, a curve here between these two vertices? Oh, come on. Near snap, you go away, sir. I don't need you. Mid snap, I also don't need you. Why can't I snap to this point? Hello? Oh, because vertex is turned off. Yeah, you need vertex snapping to be turned on, like that, and then from this point to here. Perpendicular snap, come on, there we go. Perfect. And now, I guess what we can do is take, for instance, this vertice right here. Wait, still need to do that. Perpendicular. There we go. And what would happen if we take, take this vertice, so I just click Ctrl Shift, move from here to here so that twists that's not good and besides it it seems to be fine so that's uh, one way of doing it maybe we'll come back to this later i need to think about it i need to think about that one instead here we can just at attack this and create some sort of a some sort of a pedestal table type of a thing that that goes through this ring so I'm just going to select the edges, edge loop right here by just Ctrl Shift, double clicking on it. I'm gonna bevel it, the side, uh, something like that maybe. Seems to be okay. I'm gonna select this face, this, this, and this. Just selecting some faces, uh, just extruding it upwards, I guess, something like that. Yep. Um, and I'll just flatten them out into one level. So I'll just select the whole top, click the Z, Z scale little gumball icon thingy and hit the zero to flatten it out. So now we have something like this. Seems fine. 
and we extrude this I'll just grab a gumball and choose to align to object so that I can extrude uh, in a perpendicular fashion yeah something like that seems seems okay and actually I kind of want to extrude this whole part as well but it doesn't let me extrude it normally uh, why Maybe it does. No, it doesn't. It gets the... Yeah, that's the crappy part. It uh, finds the medial... Uh, the medial? The, the, the average uh, z-axis of all of these surfaces. So I'm just going to be a little bit cheeky here. I'll just create a c-plane real fast. Don't worry about it. C plane between three points right here. So now my whole world is reor uh, reoriented to, to here, to this little surface right here. And I can switch the gumball to align to be aligned to C plane. And now I can extrude it like so. Perfect. Okay, so that works. And let's reset the C plane. Uh, set C plane world top. Bam. That is done. Okay, so now I kind of want to. Uh, it still doesn't give me a perpendicular snap. I have no idea why why they're not implementing it. But I just want to re realign all of these to their correct positions like that. And like that. Okay, so now we have... You kind of want to keep things as clean as possible as you're modeling with SubD because you're gonna get lost real fast if, if you don't do that. Okay, so we have that. Now, let's see what else can we... Uh, what else can be done. So this is like a, a, a weird little thing here that, that, that we have. I kind of want it to be a little bit smaller though, uh, or not smaller, but uh, a little bit more narrow. Ah, again, middle snap of an edge doesn't work. It's so weird that, that they don't have it like that. Um, 0 0.1, let, let's do that, something like this, yeah. That should be a bit better. So there's a, a little bit of a, of a hiccup here, but I think we'll, we'll manage, we'll, we'll fix it. Um, you can always, by the way, relax it by um, aligning this to object, by just spreading, uh, spreading these edges apart so that they are not... not all of them are in the same... Um, condensed into the same place, something like that. Now this should be much smoother, it is, but, you know, there's still some work to be done, that's for sure. Okay, so now as we have this, let me just really quickly, oops, really quickly fix this, and yeah, there we go. As we have this, I want to make one more extrusion, let's go up, bam. And actually, I want to scale these guys up. So to scale these up, uh, what can we use? Object, no, C plane, world. Um, maybe I can use a C plane, or I can just scale 1D, that's fine. Scale 1D. Midpoint, oh, there we go. Now, it, now the snap works. Something like that. Yeah, I think that's that's gonna that's gonna work. This will need to move in, but that's that's later for now. This kinda kinda works. Actually, this whole thing could be much lower. Doesn't need to be that intense. Um, I think I forgot to. Oh no, never mind. So these guys need to move down. That was my bad. As you can see, this, these videos are not planned. Uh, it's just me working and, and showing the way I, I think as I'm working. Maybe some of you will, will get a, um, 
I don't know some some thoughts from it okay so that's a platform and I kind of want to extrude it even further like that and then I, I want to what if we bevel this what if this gets beveled like that yeah so as you can see it's sub d is um, an unforgiving mistress it hurts you if you're trying to hurt it you can't do that for instance uh, that's fine i think we can still manage as long as we know what we're doing and unfortunately that is not the case right now hmm. okay let's try bevel again let's hit it with a bevel and actually let's hit this with a bevel as well something like that Okay, so that worked. You basically don't want a lot of things to go, go come in into one point. So just forcing it to be beveled, it, it will create, like it, it will enable it to be more relaxed, right? And that's that's the idea, and that's, that's the purpose of this whole thing, is making a structure that is relaxed. Oh no messed that one up so this is uh, me just creating a seaplane nothing fancy Oop. now let's do an extrusion something like that and I guess I don't want to do an extrusion there I want to do an extrusion downwards though bam I know it, it doesn't look like <laughs> like much but it's it's gonna be cool I promise or not I have no idea how how this is gonna work out it should work out though so can we can we bridge this and this just hit it with a little bit of a reconnection okay so we get something like that. Hit the tab button. So now it's doing that thing. Okay, sure. Um, and this is the moment where we start kind of winging it. As if we weren't winging it before. <laughs> but now we're really winging it. So the, the whole bottom part is... Uh, is being a little bit weird not sure if I like it what I really don't like is that that little taper there so I'm just going to make it a bit a bit more cooperative visually uh, tap there we go, that's, that's a bit better. And now can we... The question is... Can we make this into something that is... Non-volumetric, or rather it's volumetric but it doesn't... It's, it's not as visually heavy as, as this thing right here. And I think the answer to that is maybe. A very strong maybe. And that maybe is gonna become more and more of a. It's gonna become more and more of a definite yes the closer we get to it. Um, you are not going to like this, but this is the only way I can do it. bridge it like that 
Yikes. That's a rough one. That is indeed a, a very, very rough one. Maybe we can make it less rough if we just take these two points, this bad boy right here and this bad boy right here, and we just scale them up like that. Yeah, that's actually less rough. Okay, so now time to time to make it whole, make the whole thing work. So we delete the whole this one here. No, we don't delete it. Sorry, we inset it first. Inset. We want to protect those perimeters. Don't forget about that. Mode group 0.1 definitely. Once I choose a number, I like to reuse it always. Just you know, the I don't need to remember as many numbers that way. <laughs> Also helps with the design. Okay, so you can see, you know, some uh, whoopsies going on there. That's fine, we can fix that. Can we fix it? Yeah, we can, we can. Quite easily as well. We just move this down. Like so. Actually, can we move this vertical? Oops, that's V-Ray, that's not vertical at all. Oh, uh, I need to reset the seaplane back to world stop. No, that was not it. Set view, perspective. Let's come back here. And let's just move this up. M, enter, V, enter to this little vertex right here. And also, this guy M enter V enter I want this to be kind of flat as well like that Bam. okay so we have this uh, the shape going on I think it looks nice a little bit uh, yeah I, I have the same I, uh, same thoughts as you <laughs> don't don't worry about it. Um, I think uh, I think that's 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 a okay. So now for just to make it nicer, just move this in. Uh, not too much though, zero point five, something like that. Yeah, that's better. This one needs to be moved in as well. 0.5 Ah, yes The obnoxious multiple edges that I didn't didn't fix and now they're biting me in the ass Wonderful eh. Snapping with, oh my god, no, 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 I made a boo-boo uh, snapping with these um, with Rhino is something something magical. Just something absolutely magical. Can I just get an intersection point here, please? Okay, fine. We will draw a crap ton of helper lines that we shouldn't need to draw just to get this whole damn thing working. Okay, now you go here, perfect. You go here, perfect, and you go. Nah, that's that's not there. No, here, perfect. Okay, cell CRV, delete, hit tab. Looks like that. Looks fine. Just just fine. Um, and I think we're, we're getting uh, getting dangerously close to actually fin finishing this. I am going to hit this with a little bit of how do you do. Uh, and that means bevel. Just to sharpen up 
the whole thing. From here until here, double click, bevel, 0.1, bam. Hit tab just to check. Seems to be sharpening up just, just fine. And I could add a mirror modifier, uh, but you know what they say. Uh, eat a sandwich and your blood sugar will be fine. Um, bevel, 0.1. Tab, okay. So we have, we have this whole thing going on. Here, it's a little bit not not happy with me. And I understand why. I mean, I did leave it here unattended. So we kind of need to come back and say, I'm sorry. I will never leave you ever again. Please, please cooperate. Please work with me. There we go. See, it worked. So you just need to talk with your 3D models, and uh, they're they're just gonna they're just gonna work. And it's just gonna work out. Okay, let's talk language. And the language is probably like looking at it, probably German. Feels German. Can we? Wait, did I forget to chamfer you? Oh, oh, this is the moment where we actually need to mirror it because daddy messed up. So we go to subdi tools, we choose our. Um, well, actually, first we kind of want to draw out where the mirror is going to be, right? Bam, like that. That's going to be our mirror plane. And then we go to sub -D tools and we try to remember how the hell do, is it called? Reflect. Okay, select sub -D to apply reflection. This bad boy right here, start of reflection plane. Uh, here. End of reflection plane. What? No. No. Seriously, I can't reflect it on the on a custom plane. No, there's no way. Okay. What if what if we what if we change the C plane and create a C plane that that actually follows the geometry like that reflect uh, start of reflection plane right here oh yeah oh yeah 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 that that's that's the good stuff that's the good stuff uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. whoa that's that's pretty damn red though what the hell Pick a point on the side to keep uh, that one. No, wait. It already messed it up for me. Select sub to apply reflection. Yeah, this this one. Remove existing reflection, and it just completely broke my geometry. Uh, yeah, that is why we don't have a webcam. Okay, we try again. Reflect, sub D, enter. Hello? No? Okay. Reflect. From here. Nearest snap to here. And I want to keep this one. And it breaks. Well, that's fine. Uh, let it break. Okay, so even if it breaks, that's that's okay because we can do reflect again. 
uh, this one remove existing reflection so now it's fine and now we just investigate all of the parts where it breaks so it breaks here why it shouldn't That is so strange. That is so weird. All I care about is actually just this. Fixing... Fixing this. This is fine. This goes away. Can we get a midpoint? A proper midpoint? Like that. That. No, that's stupid. What? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm being stupid. From here, perpendicular, please, please, sir, please, just give me the perpendicular snap. Ah, whatever. Like that, that, and that. We are doing this manually, by the way. If you haven't noticed, but hey. At least we'll learn how to do it manually. Right? Right. So we grab some points and we are getting in here and just... That's a triangle. Yeah, that's correct. So all this needs to do this is not gonna be the prettiest. Actually, I'm thinking maybe we should... Nah. Nah. Let's, let's continue messing it up. Subd tools. 3D face. Bam, bam, bam. Bam. Create a face there. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. I wonder how much faster would it be just to undo all of it and recreate the bevel instead of trying to to solve it this way. Okay, so that is too big, but that's fine. All of the remaining ones are fine. We join everything up. One open sub D. Why are you open? Duplicate border. Uh, you are open because here, daddy messed up. Um, can we delete the edge here? And then just have two triangles going on here, maybe? Yes, maybe? Maybe? So we just bridge here, okay. Then we bridge here. Oh wait. Oh wait. I'm I'm stupid. Okay. Never mind. It works. It works that way. Okay. So we have that, that, we don't need that. Forgot what I was doing. So we have an angle here. I just want an angle here and we'll call it a day. Um so can we can I just ex extend this? Like that? Eh, it doesn't look that good now, does it? Nah, that uh, looks, looks pretty bad. Looks pretty bad. So we're not doing that. We are keeping this as it is. And maybe even... Sharpening it up a bit more. Ah, oh, come on. Give me the whole damn loop. There we go. And just extrude a bit further. Like that. And give me the loop here. Actually, w will you understand what I want from you? No, no, it won't. So we actually need to click on every single one of these. That is fine. 
That is absolutely fine. And we need to, oops, god damn it. Can I uh, go to select and... No, I can't. So it forgets what I have selected. That's perfect. Very useful. There we go, okay. And now I think we can just extrude this, like so. And also, I will do the flattening. The flattening, that, that sounds wrong. Okay. And we end up getting something like that. Hmm. Okay. Are we done? Probably. But the answer to that is we are never done. But are we done for today? Probably. Probably not. <laughs> Bevel 0 0.05. So half of what we usually use. Just to make the bad boy sharper. Um, delete, delete those two. Get in here. Come on. Bridge. Okay. Get this bridged. Tab. Looks good. Looking good. Feeling good. Uh, probably we need... Um... Is there a way... Wait. As we are bridging... I'm going to create three segments like that I'm going to take this slide it and just slide it closer to the surface and you can see that the the um, offset mode is set to absolute so it it doesn't give a shit where I'm sliding it uh, so I'm going to use proportional so now it's it's fitting with the with the faces better and we're just gonna slide it by uh, an, an, a number, some number. Let's try one. I have no idea if that did anything at all. Does slide not work with numbers? Slide does not work with numbers, that's cool. Always good to know. Also, something's off with the scaling here. Notice how this whole damn thing is breaking down. <clears throat> so how do we fix this? Well, we can actually just do this and this edge and just scale them until they meet and then do the same thing for the front. Right? Like that. This should be <clears throat> a okay. Hmm. I think we're. I think we're done. I'll just hit it. What if we hit this with a bevel? Wait, 0 0.1 bevel is a little bit too much uh, right now. 0 0.05. Oh, it becomes more slabby, but also creates a dent here. So I don't want that. Or actually I do, because this is not nice. Redo. Yeah, this is actually nicer. Okay. You, sir, will do the same thing. Bevel. Five tab eh, a little bit a little bit less here Yeah that's good That seems to be doing just fine can we do a little bit of a bevel for you? 
Oh, no, definitely not. Okay, <clears throat> enough. Enough here. So, we have ourselves... Uh, element number one. E-map it, just to sh showcase better. Turntable. So this is one out of 14 elements that we are going to uh, going to be 3D modeling out. And I'm, I'm going to do a much faster video, next one, where I'm going to model out the remaining 13 and probably just kind of skip ahead in, in a few instances, but this is like the, the, the basic principles of how I model these um, with sub D, right? If you want this model, if you want the starting uh, file for what we're going to be doing up next, consider becoming a Patreon or, or uh, because Patreons get the, all of the files, or you can just simply uh, follow along and uh, get something similar to this. Yay. Okay, we are done with this one and I will see you in the next video, hopefully shortly. Later. Later.